About a year ago, I made a video about all of the reasons I don't tend to use Home Assistant. And since that time, an awful lot of their fans have come to me and said, <clears throat> Paul, why don't you try Home Assistant again? You should try Home Assistant. If you tried Home Assistant, you wouldn't have this problem. Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! So I gave it another go. Here is an entire video about why I still don't use Home Assistant. Mr. Socky, can you tell the boys and girls what Home Assistant is? Yes! It's a way for overly aggressive nerds to feel superior about themselves, even though they've got tiny little dicks. That's only partly true. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, please don't hate me. Home Assistant is genuinely absolutely awesome. If you've got the time and the know-how to set it up, it's going to make you feel superior because it is superior. In simple terms, Home Assistant is a way to get your Philips Hue stuff to respond when your IKEA stuff does something, for example. You can get stuff to talk to each other without using the internet, too. So if you've heard of If This Then That, that's the same thing, but you're reliant on somebody else's server on the internet. If you buy yourself a Raspberry Pi and install Home Assistant on it, then you're not reliant on anybody. Home Assistant is about taking back control of your smart home from the evil mega corporations not enough yes, so that they can't decide for you what devices can and can't talk to each other. It's about putting all your devices into one app on your phone, even if they were bought from different companies. And it's about making everything work locally so that even if your internet connection is down, or the smart home company that sold you the product goes bust, it will continue working. But most importantly, most importantly of all, it's about waving your d around in the faces of people that don't have Home Assistant. HOME ASSISTANT! But first of all, let me show you how you can try Home Assistant absolutely for free, without a Raspberry Pi, right now, and get it set up in under five minutes. Thanks to an utter genius who goes by the name Alex IT, you can install Home Assistant on your PC right now. All you've got to do is visit the link in my video description and then download the Has WP zip file. Extract the files and then double click the Has icon. That's it. Literally, that, that's it. For the Raspberry Pi, it's almost as simple. All you've got to do is visit the Home Assistant website, download some files from there, burn them onto a tiny little fiddly stupid micro SD card using some software called Etcher, and then plug that SD card into your Raspberry Pi. Whichever method you use, when you first open Home Assistant, it will automatically scan your network for all of the home automation devices that you own, and then add them into a control panel. How easy is that? A little bit too f***ing easy! And we know a song about that, don't we, Mr. Socky? When something is too easy, it's probably bollocks. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, everything that Home Assistant has achieved so far is absolutely miraculous. It's really cool the way it's able to just detect things around your network and then control them. But unfortunately, some very obvious things are already missing. And this is where the trouble starts. The first and most obvious thing that's missing for me is all of my Toyo Smart Life Wi-Fi gear. And this isn't a major problem because I can go into the integrations section of Home Assistant and then add the integration manually, which is great. And I can now control all of my Wi-Fi lighting gear. That's unfortunately where the fun ends. This Toyo Smart Life motion sensor is detected by Home Assistant as a switch. Not a switch, it's a motion sensor. But whatever, I am happy to use it as a switch as long as motion means on and no motion means off, which is how I thought it would work. Does it work? If something is too easy, of course it f***ing doesn't. Nope, it's bollocks. And I thought I'd be able to just go into Home Assistant, find the motion sensor, go into its settings and just change the category. Just to tell Home Assistant, treat this as a motion sensor, not as a switch. That option's not there. But this is nothing compared to the pain that you're going to go through if you discover that there isn't actually an official integration for one of your products. We're talking about Broadlink, who are absolutely massive, Switchbot, who are absolutely massive, and in my case, also a company called Cololite, 
and Lightwave RF, who are a fairly large UK supplier. All four of those can be added to Home Assistant if you are some kind of nuclear physicist. I don't understand Home Assistant. And this leads to our next major problem. Getting help is a nightmare, and you will need to ask for help. When you find that you can't do something in Home Assistant, you go browsing the internet. But almost all of the tutorials are out of date and everything has changed and they're no longer applicable. If you do find one of these things, you'll probably find that you get stuck halfway through because you don't understand one of the commands that they're asking you to run. As soon as you ask for help, you'll be faced with one of two types of people. The first one is a total bellend. The second type of person you will come across is genuinely well-meaning and really does want to help you, but unfortunately, their brains have melted from all the thrusting. This is a chap trying to help me control my television using my Broadlink RM Pro via Home Assistant. John says, go to integrations, search for Broadlink, add it, and follow the instructions. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? How hard can it be? Can you see any instructions, Mr. Socky? No, and I already want to die! That's right, unfortunately, children. Home Assistant will make you want to end it all. And I've actually spent time googling how the Broadlink integration fits together and how you can get it to work. And unfortunately, it will only control Broadlink's remotes, which means my Broadlink plug sockets are out of the equation anyway. And to actually achieve what I was trying to do with my Broadlink RM Pro and Home Assistant would involve training each individual TV remote, set-top box remote, projector remote, every infrared remote that I own to the Broadlink device using Broadlink software, and then, using my PC, reverse engineer all of the infrared codes out of the device onto my computer so I've got a notepad filled with gibberish, and then I would have to manually update a config file on my Raspberry Pi with that mountain of gibberish so that I can then add the individual codes as entities to my home assistant. How hard can it be, John? How hard can it be? So we find out, Mr. Socky, using a trusty complicatometer. Yes, that's right, children. Not f***ing worth it. And it's all like this. It's not like the Broadlink RM Pro is some niche fringe device. It's the most popular infrared blaster in the smart home market now that Logitech have crapped out of it. The new Harmony doorstop from Logitech. That was £115 well spent. The shiny little sh**. So when are the guys from Home Assistant going to start taking the Broadlink integration seriously? The current integration is the same trash that I checked out a year ago. It hasn't improved in the slightest. This is a major, major player in the smart home industry. Home Assistant crew, get on it. I literally set up Home Assistant on my PC for the first time, created a dashboard using the things that it had discovered, and then pressed a button to update Home Assistant. Now I have this. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. You've got to be kidding me! I want update! One update to a brand new instance with barely anything done to it, and it's managed to break something! And I wouldn't mind so much if it wasn't for the fact that the Home Assistant fanboys are adamant that this doesn't happen. Nope! Mine's been fine for five years! I never have a problem with any of my Home Assistant devices, and I've got 600 million of them! Bullshit! One such knobhead was in my comments section giving me that exact speech at the time that I was accidentally stumbling across a post from him on the Home Assistant Facebook group saying this. Who is this? You broke my heart! I'll never use you again! You just lost everything just in one update! Is I set up my Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant, did barely anything to it, and then left it under my desk for a couple of months. 
I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give Home Assistant another go. It was dead. Its IP address is still on my network. I can see it on my router. But if I go and access its IP address via any browser in this house, nothing happens. I can no longer access that configuration. So I figured I would give the PC-based version a go. How hard can that be? How hard can it be? And I'm thinking I'll install Node Red to Home Assistant because apparently that's the ultimate solution that everyone keeps yammering on about. And I'm thinking to myself, I'll follow the guide from my mate Rob from the hookup because he knows what he's doing. Node Red? More like Nope Red. Is that, is that funny? I can't even follow his first instruction! His first instruction is to open the supervisor tab and there is no supervisor tab! And according to the internet, this is because my Windows version of Home Assistant is a cut down version of Home Assistant that doesn't have the supervisor privileges. So then I'm thinking, well, I can either go back to the Raspberry Pi or I can install a virtual box on my Windows machine and then install Home Assistant into the virtual box. But unfortunately, there's no drop down to choose Linux 64 bit OS. So then I'm reading some instructions that say I need to go into the BIOS of my computer. At which point I thought, F this, I would rather kill myself. Don't get me wrong, the Home Assistant team are incredible. These are volunteers that just make this for the fun of it. And it's an incredible project that is making leaps and bounds towards moving away from being way too nerdy to being an actual consumer-based product but it really isn't there yet. All that said, once you actually achieve something, you get this incredible sense of accomplishment and you really are moving towards a smart home that is more unified and more ubiquitous. Word of the day, toilet paper. Unfortunately, I don't think Home Assistant has really taken any great steps since I last investigated it an entire year ago. Everything for me is still exactly the same as it was. Nothing has changed in the least. I've only done this video because people kept pressuring me to try it again. People kept saying, oh, you know, maybe you'll find it better this time. It's the same. It's exactly the same. You should have a go with it anyway. It's free! I mean, like, why not? If you don't have a Raspberry Pi, then the actual Windows-based version of it will give you a feel for the basics and how many of your devices you can easily integrate in and how all that fits together. There's no reason not to. Like I say, there is a link in the description that will take you to an excellent dude's work who has made all this possible for you. You should go give that a go and find out if Home Assistant is for you. If you're one of those people in my comment section telling me you're just stupid and lazy, all you've got to do is go into the configuration.yaml file and update the entities to reciprocate from the Please have sex with somebody. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. I'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube's algorithms know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These incredible people here are my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I wouldn't have made this video. Some of you Home Assistant fans probably wish I had no patrons. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. I'll see you next time. Mr. Socky, can you tell the boys and girls what Home Assistant is? No, because you can't remember what it is. <laughs> That's about waving your d in other people's faces. <laughs> Can you see any instructions, Mr. Socky? No! <laughs> no, no, he's... <laughs> You're a ventriloquist, Mr. Socky. It's now that Logitech Harmony have crapped them pant... Crapped them pants. They've crapped them pants. I, you just lost everything! Just do a one-up day! Yeah! <laughs>